Hello, I am Mark from GCO Tutor, and I'm here today with Practical Machinist to discuss about the G01G code, the G00G code, and how we use these in a 3D environment using the Cartesian coordinate system. So let's start off by having a look at G00. Now this would also be referred to as G00 quite often in industry, but it's actually G and followed by two zeros. Now we can shorten this. We can use G0 um, on our code as well. And this stems back from the old days when our machines didn't hold as much data. So every bit counts. So we used to shorten our G codes and the controls understand it. So G0 would also work. So G00 is used for rapid travel. So this moves the machine as fast as it possibly can go between point A and point B. Now this is a straight line move. So if we were going to move X minus 100 millimeters in this example here, we would just state G00 X minus 100. And we would wrap it as fast as we could to the left of the machine by 100 millimeters in X. So G01, one of the main reasons I'm bringing this video to you today is I want to talk about G01 or G01. So G01 here is our linear interpretation mode. <laughs> our linear interpolate, our, it's our straight line movement mode. So G01 travels from point A to point B under a feed rate. So it works a little bit like G00, but we offer a feed rate when we're using G01, so it's controlled. And we use this for when we're removing material. So G01 X minus 100 would move our component 100 millimeters to the left, the same as G00, but it won't move unless we state a feed rate. So we're stating a feed rate here with F and then our millimeters per minute, meters per minute, inches per minute, whatever we are working in. Okay, so let's have a look how we're going to plot these graphs in our 3D environment. Now you probably recognize this chart or this graph. This is the same as the graphs we used to use at school. The Y axis runs up and down and the X axis runs left to right. So this represents our machine in our 3D working environment. So we tend to use Cartesian coordinate system, this coordinate system the most when programming CNC machines, but there is other options. We can use polar coordinate system as well. So we're going to look at the how we program this in absolute and I'll explain more about absolute and incremental after this section. So we're going to start off by plotting our first point and our first point is x1, y2. So that's one unit up in x and two units up in y. So this would give us this position on our chart. Okay, so to write that in G code, we would write G00, our rapid travel command, x1 and y2. Now this could be a metric or imperial, it doesn't matter what units we are using, we're just using units. So X1 units, Y2 units. Okay, so our next point would be X3, Y1. So that's three positions over in X and one unit up in Y. So that would give us this point. And to write that in G code, it would look like this. Now we don't need to write G00 again on each line. Once it's active, the machine knows it's active, so we don't need to keep stating it on every single line. Okay, so our next point is we're coming down two units in Y. So there's actually three units difference between our start position and our end position of Y there, but all our dimensions are stemming from our zero position, our datum position, because we are using absolute. So we're coming to a position of Y minus two, even though it's a three unit move. And we would write that just as y minus two. We don't need to give an x dimension if we're not moving the axes in x. Okay, so to finish off our profile here, we're just gonna go back to x zero, y zero, back to our date and position. And we would program that like this also. Okay, so that's moving our machine around using rapid travel commands G zero zero. So let's see how that can change when we're writing with G zero one, our feed rate command. Okay, so when we're using G01, there's a few differences, but it's pretty much the same in regards to moving our part around or moving our tool around inside our machine. So we're going to use the same plots. So let's plot X1, Y2. So that'll give us this position on our graph. And we would write the G code like this. So G01, X1, Y2, 
Now we've got to give a feed rate. Because we are using G01 and not G00, we have to issue a feed rate so the machine knows how fast to move its axes. So again, we're not using particular units here. I've just put an arbitrary figure in of 1.3 for our feed rates. Now this could be meters per minute or it could be inches per minute, depending what system you are using. Okay, so that's that point. Let's move on to our next one, X3, Y1. So we're coming down in Y2 units and we're coming over in X2 units. But because all our dimensions run from our datum position, our zero, zero position, because we're programming in absolute right now. So our code would look like this. So we now have X3, Y1. So again, we don't need to state G01 on each line, and we also don't need to state a feed rate on each line, unless we are changing a feed rate. And let's look at our next line. So we're moving down to Y minus two on our grid there. So it's a three unit move in the negative on Y. So that gives us to the point of Y minus two, and the G code would be written like this. Now I've added the example here of changing the feed rate. So to show how we can change the feed rate during our programs. So say for example, we needed to slow down a little bit on this particular cut. Maybe we're having some chattering or, or something, a bad surface finish. So we need to slow down our feed rate a little bit. We don't need to reissue G01 again. We just need to change the feed rate by popping an F word at the end of our line there. Okay, and now for our final move, we're going back home to our zero, zero position, our datum position, and our G code would simply look like this, X zero, Y zero, and that would take our tool back to the machine zero position or our datum zero position. Okay, so so far we've been doing everything in G90 absolute mode. So what this is, it means all our dimensions stem from the datum position. So every time we give a dimension, we take the zero point of our datum position, and then we plot those points from that position, the same as we just did with our graph. So that's G90 absolute. That's what we've been programming in so far. But we can also program in, in G91 incremental. Now the difference is between absolute and incremental is when we're programming in incremental, it takes the last known position of our tool or cutter as zero. So all our dimensions stem from the last known position of the cutter and not the zero datum position that we set with our machine. So let's take a look at an example of programming the same profile with a G91 incremental mode. So we're gonna plot the same points as before but this time we're going to plot them using incremental. So you can see the difference between absolute and incremental when programming with G00, G01. So we're going to start off our program with G91 this time. So let's make sure the machine is in its incremental position. Now quite often we would have this before this section on the safety line or previously in the program. But because we're just writing some pseudocode here showing how to plot points, we're going to add G91 just to show that we're in incremental. Now you can put G91 wherever you like it in the program. Just be aware that all your dimensions will switch to incremental as soon as you state this. So our first point, X1, Y2. So our code would look like this. So we're moving in G01 still. So X1, Y2 would take us to this position. And we have to issue a feed rate because we are in G01, the same as before. So that point is exactly the same as in absolute because we're stemming from the origin position, the datum position. Okay, so our second point, x2, y minus one this time. So why is this different? So we're coming from our last known point, that x1, y2. Now we're taking that as zero. So all moves now is coming, taking that position as zero. So we're coming over an x two millimeters further than the last position, which is why X is two. And we're coming down one unit in Y. So Y is minus one. And the G code would look like this. So we have X two, Y minus one. Okay, for our third position down here, we're coming down in Y minus again, that single axis move. Now, although we're coming down to Y minus two on the Y axis, it's actually a three unit move down from the Y from the last position. So that's where this incremental is kicking in again. So we're coming down three millimeters of Y minus from our incremental position that we stated with the X2 Y minus one. So in the program, it would look like this. Again, I've added a feed rate at this point. So you can see how we would change the feed rate if needed. So we're now coming down 
because our our move is um, three units away from our start position, it's y minus three. Okay, so let's go back to our initial position, our start position. It's no longer our zero position because the last known position of our tool was our zero position. So to go back home, we would issue three units to the left, so it would be x minus three, and two units up in y plus, so it'd be y plus two. So our G code would simply look like this, x minus three, y plus two. So when we're programming an incremental, as you can see, we have to be aware that all our dimensions will change. And it's very easy to accidentally get confused between the two when you're programming. Now I like to program, if I'm programming an incremental, I like to program the whole program in incremental. I don't like to switch and change it within my programs because it saves confusion. But you may find yourself in a position where you do need to switch into incremental because maybe you don't know the position of the where you want the cutter to be, but you do know that position from the last known tool position. So you can switch over to incremental as you like throughout the programs. I personally prefer not to because it saves confusion. So if you want to know more about programming with G00 and G01, the Cartesian coordinate system and incremental and absolute programming, I have a course called the Foundation to G-Code over on my website to gcodetutor.com. Plus I've got all sorts of G-Code courses and CAD, CAM and also maths. So pop over to my website to learn more about this fascinating subject of programming CNC machines.